Thank you. <laughs> Just want to thank you for having me around. I felt very welcome. Thank you for your hospitality. I had a good meal served. I come back. <laughs> Fellowship. <laughs> Those that uh, knew I was coming here said hello to your brothers and sisters. Yeah, um, I just want to say that, um, uh, of course, uh, Robbie, you stayed in my house. You drank my coffee, everything. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> now I stay to you, I was drinking your coffee. Uh, but um, you, you feel at home. Yeah, just, that's what I felt. And uh, I'll be happy here. I'm happy here. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to share that. It's just nice to meet my brothers and sisters and just to come into a house where I've never been before. And you feel at home. And we can talk, we can, we, we understand each other. Amen? Yeah, so great. So, um, talk a little bit about, watch the time. I can talk, I can talk a long time. <laughs> but, uh, I've been instructed. I've, I've asked a question. Yeah, so, anyway, talk a little bit about unity. Yeah, uh, I was just uh, thinking about uh, specific uh, scripture that came to mind just as I was sitting there is that um, we there's a, there's a lot of scriptures I would like to share some I will I will quote some scriptures some we will look up okay otherwise no time enough but uh, this one is in Psalm 133 uh, you can look it up if you want but I pass through quickly it's the first first Psalm 133 um, and it, it says that uh, it's a song of uh, degree of David uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. Yeah, and uh, and then it talks about uh, some uh, examples of uh, that is like the oil that uh, drips down uh, from the from the from the top to the bottom, all over the place. Um, but but uh, more important, I would say, is that uh, when there is unity, this is where the Lord says, "I command my blessing." And all the people say. Yeah. So there's there's many places in the time you read in the New Testament, but united we stand, divided we fall. Yeah, so and it starts within ourselves. If we are divided in ourselves, we cannot stand. So it starts with ourselves to be, become one with the Lord, of course. Yeah, and uh, so we're going to we, we're going to talk a little bit about that and. Um, have you heard about, uh, I've given this talk a little bit of a title. It's not from the James Bond film. Shaken, not stirred. Have you heard this? <laughs> you don't watch James Bond. But of course you see that it's, it's related to a drink, but I'm not talking about a drink here. It's an expression and it comes from your your language. It's not, it's not exists in, in my country, yeah? So, so, shaken, not stirred. So, I read it out to you what I, I had a little bit of on Google. Google knows everything. Eh? It says, if you say that someone has been shaken, but not stirred, stirred by an experience. We all go through many experiences in life, ups and downs, and we think trials and tribulations and all sorts of things. So, we are shaken, yeah? but we're not stirred. Yeah? And so, you have these... When people say that, you mean that they have been slight, maybe you might have been slightly disturbed. It happens, eh? It happens to me. It happens to you as well. Um, you, you might be emotional affected by it. Yeah, we go through the motions. But it's not deep enough to change our mind and our behavior and our thinking. And all the people said. Amen. Yeah? Because we are in the Lord. Yeah? So this is the good thing. Yeah, so we might be shaken, but not stirred. Yeah, so it's very important. Um, so Second Timothy, you might, you might want to find Second Timothy uh, chapter three. 
Second Timothy. Uh, the Apostle Paul is a great example, of course. Uh, he went through many things. Uh, you know the scriptures about what, what he went through. He, he gives an account of what's, what's happened to him. Um, and But the, the, the interesting thing is um, in, in verse 10 of chapter 3, it, it says there, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, Faith, long suffering, charity, patience, and then he carries on to say persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me to Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. And all the people say, yeah. "This for him." Eh? So uh, sometimes I, I feel a bit. You could be, even feel a bit, bit guilty if you haven't gone so many experiences as Paul had. Because there's a relationship between the, the amount of work you do and the things that happen to you. That's what I think. Yeah, You can sit down in the corner and do nothing. Nothing happens to you. But if you go out there and you be you a witness for the Lord and you speak, yeah, things will happen. Yeah? But the Lord is always there to deliver us. This is the, the good point. Yeah? Whatever happens, we will always stand. Okay, so um, um, talk a little bit about uh, Revival Fellowship. Uh, I heard uh, tonight over the meal, over the tea, RF. <laughs> <laughs> we never use it. RF. You said RF, yeah? Revival Fellowship. We are identified under the name Revival Fellowship. Um, I've written down here for myself. If we... If we fail to unite with one another, we have no fellowship. It's true, eh? What is it? Yeah, so we'll have a look a bit further down. Um, yeah. So we'll look a little bit at the revival, the fellowship, and relate it to revival. Yeah? We want to see revival. No, people say, yeah, what we see. Um, so maybe is Isaiah, uh, Old Testament, Isaiah 57, who would like to read. Yeah, in Isaiah 57, it's a few of my uh, favorite scriptures there, it, it, it shows you how God is. Yeah, um, He will give, although He might be upset sometimes because of our behavior or people do. Yeah, but if you look here, it says, and, and uh, in verse um, 14, maybe we shall start reading verse 14 and. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Yeah? For this says the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is what God wants to do. Yeah. Uh, always like uh, the young children, they say, so so where's God? Yeah, where is he? Yeah, and and uh, to me, this is the answer where God says, uh, um, for this said the high and lofty one, yeah, uh, whose name is holy. Children ask, where's God? Eh? They, look, they look to heaven, behind the clouds, somewhere. Yeah, but he, God is there. I dwell in the high and holy place. And with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit. If we humble ourselves, the Lord is quickly with us. Always. Yeah, we can count on that. And he wants to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. 
Um, I like that. In Matthew 5, I think it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Yeah? For, for, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah? If we think and we say, oh, we know it all. Don't talk to me. Talk to the hand. Yeah? We say, oh, talk to the hand. Yeah? But if we are humble, yeah, God can reach us. Yeah? And he can heal us. And he can revive us yeah, if, if, if needed. So, um, yeah, so, so in, in, in verse 16, it says, For I will not contend forever, neither will I always be rough. For the spirit shall fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covenant uh, was I wrath, and I smote him. I hid me, and I, and I was wrath. And he went on throwardly in the way of his heart. Some people do this. Yeah, they cannot be talked to. But the Lord looks at them also. And um, but here it says, if you, if you read on, um, uh, where was I? Um, verse 18, I think. No, 17. Um, let me read from 18. I have seen his ways and I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comfort unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the, of the lips. Peace, peace. To him that is afar off and to him that is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked, I like the trouble sea when, uh, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up myrrh and dirt. There is no peace, said, said my God, to the wicked. You know, we don't want to be in that category, and all the people said, we don't want to be there. But uh, God has a, has a, looks over all of us, and he sees, he sees the heart. Yeah, we cannot see that specific heart of the, those that we meet maybe during the day. God knows them all. Yeah. And he will he would like to heal them. He would like to forgive them. Yeah. He's a good God, as as we heard in the testimony. Okay, so um so let's go to uh Matthew six. Matthew six. So being being part of the fellowship, being part of the fellowship and being assembled regularly is a, a necessity. Yeah, it's a, I, I have a choice. Uh, I do sit with my colleague in Newport somewhere to have another dinner, but I'd rather have dinner with, with you guys, with my brothers and sisters. It's great. I, I, I enjoy it so much, yeah, because uh, work will always stay. It will never go away, the work. But to come here on, on in, the, in the midweek, to come and be with you here, very special. Yeah? I find it very special to come to spend the time together. Yeah? It is very important. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I've, you have a, a saying, it's um, a necessary evil. Have you heard about this? I, I've invented another one. A necessary good is to come here. A necessary good. I was reading about the necessary evil. So the I was I was reading about the an aircraft was called the necessary evil. Do you know that? You know which aircraft this was? That was the, 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 the aircraft that dropped the atomic bombs on. Yeah? It, the aircraft was called the necessary evil. Yeah. So but um, being coming together in fellowship is, is a necessary good. Yeah. Um, if you have to select between two evils, select none. Yeah, don't forget that. Yeah? So we go walk away from that. We don't want to be good. Yeah, God says be good. Yeah, the Bible says if you if for those who know to do good, it's good. Yeah, but for those who know to do good but do not, for them it's sin. You know the scripture? Yeah. I, I can't say out of my heart where it is, but I know the scripture. I know it's there. You'll find it. Yeah? And um, so, um, so yeah, it's, fellowship is, is really important. Yeah, and um, there's a saying, I think it's in English, separate the wheat from the chaff. Is it in your, your language? It means separate good from evil. Yeah, there's another saying that says there is no wheat 
without chaff. You know what this means? Nobody's perfect. So we can look at ourselves. You might say, I'm perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we want to grow like this. And we want to be good always. So, and this is why uh, I think it's Hebrew 10 25, where it says, when you come together, you sharpen each other, you, you, you encourage each other, you help each other to grow better, to be a better person. Yeah, we can watch after each other. And this is why the fellowship is so important. Um, yeah, it, it, it says Hebrews 10, we don't go to there, but it's not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day uh, approaching. I mean, everybody can see the whole world is in turmoil. Eh? It's, it's, it's a nice weather today, but uh, if you open the news or the paper or the internet, uh, it's terrible. Yeah? We, we don't see a solution. Eh? We try very hard to find a solution to this world. There is no solution. The Lord will return uh, quicker than we think. Um, okay, so um, let's go to um, Luke uh, 6. Luke 6. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. Yeah. God has handed over everything to him for the time being. The scripture says that uh, when the time comes and he returns, he will hand over the, the kingdom to his father. Yeah, we read that. Yeah, this is what will happen. But for now, he is in charge. He is our shepherd. We've sung about it. He is our leader. He's a shepherd um, and everything. So Luke 6, 48. Of course, the foundation shall be laid, should be laid on the rock. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose, the stream beat. Difficult word for me to say vehemently. Very difficult. Upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. Shaken but not stirred. You got the picture? Yeah, because we are on the rock. Jesus Christ. And uh, so fellowship, have you ever looked uh, at the word fellowship in the Bible? Yeah, you looked up? Yeah. You know what? I'll read it out, uh, read it out again. Yeah. Partnership, it means partnership. Uh, that is literally participation. You take part in it. Yeah. It's, it's so logical. Eh? Yeah. God wants us to be part of it. Yeah. If you don't come together, you're not part of it. Yeah. Participation. It means um, it's, it's a social intercourse, communication or dealing between indiv individuals. So if you come, don't come together, we don't have this communication. I would have never known you and your lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Because it also talks about benef benefaction. It's a donation or a gift we give. It could be about time. Maybe we'll give some money to help another. You know, the tithing, just to help each other. Uh, that's, that's what the word means. Or communication. We communicate. It's fellowship. It also talks about contribution. To contribute and distribute. We are here to distribute and to contribute. Yeah, that's fellowship. Yeah, so um, it's very important. Um, yes, partnership. It, that's indeed participation. Um, and that's the big question for all of us. Are we truly participating? You say somebody could be a seed warmer. Just just that. Yeah. But, you know, we, we come here just, we want here to help each other. To encourage each other because the, the things will be coming at us and uh, the testimonies can help us because you, you listen to the testimony and we go through the motions and we come through yeah we overcome as an encouragement 
for those that listen to the testimonies. Yeah. Um, so go to First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. So by the way, I've stayed in Pastor Paul uh, Noble's house for a week, and uh, he's a gentleman, a gentleman, a gentle character. He's a character. It's a nice. He's a nice pastor. You will meet him. Um, verse nine in, in chapter three, verse nine. There, um, it, it says there, for we are laborers together with God. Now you think about the fellowship that I've just mentioned. What that means? Yeah. If you are not in fellowship, how shall you labor together with God? Because God wants us to be like this and wants to use us in this form. To fellowship, to have the fellowship, to be a testimony. Yeah, so we are laborers together with God. He are God, God's husbandry. He are God's building. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, our bodies. Yeah, all of us together form the body of Christ, the temple. Yeah. This is what we are. It is sometimes a language. I'm Dutch. I read Dutch. But I have to look up the word husbandry. I, I like to look up words, what it means. Um, the meaning of husbandry, you know that, eh? because you are English, and you know everything. Eh? But I'm Dutch, so I have to look it up. But it's interesting if you look at what that means. It says, the care cultivation and breeding of crops and, the, and animals, it says here. It's a dictionary. But think about that, that God cares for us. He cultivates us. He wants to grow the fruit in us. Breeding of crops. Yeah? So, so this is what God is doing. Huh? It's not a, like a wasteland. It's not a wasteland. God cares for us, he cultivates us, and he wants to grow in, 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 in the spirit and in fruit. This is what God wants for us, to be a shining example. Yeah? And uh, the interesting thing I was reading about this is the, the peasants, farmer, who cultivated the land, became its owner. I'm sorry, three. I've given away my age. Bob, you know that. If you work on the land, it becomes yours. So it is interesting because they worked so hard on this, yeah, and it became their own. This is what needs to happen with us. It has to become our own. It's, it's, we become one. This is our land. This is our life. This is how God wants us to be. This is how we go. This is how we do it. Yeah. So I like that word. Um, Fellowship, contribution, Acts 20, the book of Acts, chapter 20. Talk about a little bit of fellowship, contribution, and distribution. Acts 20, 35. This is Paul talking to others. I've show, showed the all things how that soul laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord how he said it is more blessed blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. If you think about uh, contribution and distribution yeah, it's more blessed uh, to, to give and to receive. If you, if you if you give freely, yeah, this is what God wants. Yeah, uh, giving there's in the dictionary. If you give something to somebody, you don't expect it back, isn't it? If you are in the boat of one, when do I get it back? It doesn't work, isn't it? You give freely, yeah, because you want to give, and uh, God loves you. Uh, uh, you. You give out yeah, to each other. Um, uh, 
and maybe Acts 6. It's about com uh, to communicate or communication. I call it prayer. Uh, we have communication amongst each other. I communicate with God, praying. Yeah, to pray. Communicate with God. Chapter 6, 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Yeah. I've, I've put a self a question for myself here. How do we know if that prayer, communication, is working properly? Or is working well? How do we know? Uh, I've, I've put an answer here. You think about that. Our communication with our Lord works good or well. If the Lord is still able to get messages delivered to you, which are not necessarily the things that you want to hear. Do I have to repeat that? We, we have that experience. Sometimes you could, the word comes at you and say, oh, it's not for me. You sit in a meeting, you know, so, oh, that's for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you recognize this? It must about him, like a, a, a prophecy or, you know, that one. <laughs> it's wrong, isn't it? So, God delivers messages, and uh, you, could, you know, if the communication works well between God and you, you can hear what he says. It's not for your neighbor then, it's for you, and all the people say. Amen. It's just a lot, but some of my thoughts that I had, so. So shake and not stir. I don't know where I started. First Peter, first, uh, chapter 1, First Peter. Let's go, First Peter, chapter 1, almost done. Verse 7. We, we have always, uh, I said, uh, I came to the Lord in 1990. The family was baptized in 1995. I remember, I've got a good memory. I will never forget that. 1995. And you, just before years end. See, I kept it at all. It's all stored in the hard drive. But, <laughs> but um, we've always put the Lord in the first place. We were many times shaken. Definitely also stirred, but we're still here. Yeah? And all this time. And it's so good to see you. And I go around in the assembly because I, I travel so I can see brothers and sisters. A long, long standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holding fast is a great encouragement for me. So I hope to come many times. So let's see if we can see each other. Okay. So in verse 7, in First Peter, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom, have not, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom thou know you see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Yeah, it's beautiful scriptures. We know we have to, uh, what does it say in Matthew 24, 13? Is that where we endure? He, he that endures until the end shall be saved. Is that correct? I'll just quote the scripture. You look it up. If I got it wrong, all right. You tell me later. But it says if you endure until the end, that person will be saved. We can't just uh, uh, halfway down the road say, oh, that's it. Can't do it anymore. Sit down. No, no. We'll carry on. Yeah, And we will keep on encouraging uh, each other. All right, so um, to finish then, uh, chapter 2 in uh, First Peter. Stay in First Peter, chapter 2, verse 3. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, 
disallowed indeed of man, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Therefore, also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in, in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believed on him shall not be confounded. Unto, unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made ahead of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they have been appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Yeah, we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I could give a talk on a peculiar people. If you look that up, well, that, that's amazing what that word means. One of them is striking. We are striking. Yeah. It's like 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 a fighter plane comes in, boom boom, <laughs> striking. <laughs> yeah, but peculiar is a very nice word. Well, you, you look it up. Uh, but it says here that you should for show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of the darkness into His marvelous light. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Uh, first uh, first ten, which in time past were not the people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dear and beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be of your good works, uh, by your good works, which they shall behold, glory thy God, in the day of visitation. This is the, the moment that you know we will we look forward to we meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. Taken up in the air, you can fly. Even my with my 120 kilograms, I will fly. I, I need to fly. Yeah. <laughs> you also, Rob, you fly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to lose weight for that. We can all <laughs> it will be transferred. Well, said we will transfer it, transformed. I was just I was just just the other day I was in Athens. I get around. So the, I was at a place called Marsh Hill, where the Areopagus, where Paul converted some some Athenians. And uh, on, on the top of the rock there's the Acropolis. Have you been there? You know, you see from pictures, a temple. At the time when Paul was there, the apostle, it must have been a well, massive religious place, all over with statues. And, 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 you, when he, and Paul says, when I went through your city, I saw all these statues and all this. I saw this statue of the unknown God. This is the one I preached to you. Yeah? I was exactly on the spot where he was. There's a, there's a plaque with that. This is the place where Paul was, and he, he converted some, some atheists. It's, it's uh, written there. Yeah, but this is a, I mean, I just the other day I saw on the news, so many people go and visit tourists. Oh, the old, it must be a crowded place. But then when you come down of the Acropolis, in, in the sort of the downtown, you would say, downtown Acropolis, in some forest, some trees, some little roads, there's a little church with one door, very, very small little building. Nobody goes there, everybody goes to the Acropolis. And then there's a little, little, Tiny, I'll show you a photo later. And it says, it, there was a little sign outside. It says, the Church of the Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, you know this word, eh? It's in, in, in Romans 12, verse 1, that if you are understood, you are, you are changed. You are changed. You are, you are changed. The word is metamorphosis. You know, we are the Church of the Metamorphosis, and all the people say. Amen. Amen. Sir, what shall I do now? Yeah. Stop it. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't watch your time.